welcome back. It's time now for sports news. Let's join Charles Aruka. In football terms, it's called La Decima. Channel's television wins the glorious 10th. So we'll launch straight into sports news. And President Muhammad Buhari has promised to reward athletes and footballers who excelled in various sporting events in 2016. The president is also expected to honor athletes who excelled in various sports from 1985 when the players won the FIFA Under-17 World Cup till date. Among those yet to be rewarded are the Golden Eaglets of 1985 who were promised houses for winning the maiden edition of the FIFA Under-17 World Cup in China. Others are the victorious national men's basketball team who won the 2015 FIBA Africa Basketball Championship in Tunisia and the team Nigeria to the Commonwealth Youth Games in Samoa. World Scrabble champion Wellington Jigere, the Dream Team 6, winners of the African Under-23 Championship in Senegal and the Golden Eaglets that won the 2015 FIFA Under-17 World Cup in Chile are also to be rewarded. In tennis, Serena Williams and Novak Djokovic have been named the Women's and Men's Players of the Year by the International Tennis Federation, ITF. Both won three of the four Grand Slams in 2015 and are well clear in the world rankings. Williams, who was named ITF World Champion for the sixth time, won five titles throughout the year, finishing with a 53-3 win-loss record. Djokovic, who finished the year as men's number one for the fourth time, won the award for a fifth time. He managed a career-best 11 titles and finished with an 82-6 record. India's Sania Mirza and Martina Hengis of Switzerland were named the women's doubles champions with Dutchman Jean-Julien Roher and Horia Tekau of Romania picking up the men's award. Well, in athletics administration, French magistrates have filed new, tougher corruption charges against former IAAF president Lamine Diak in connection with cover-ups of Russian doping. Diak had previously been accused of passive corruption on suspicion that he took around 1 million euros to cover up positive drug tests by Russian athletes. An official with the Paris Financial Prosecutor's Office confirms Diak is now accused of active corruption which generally involves offering money or other promises in exchange for violating a rule. The preliminary charges allow magistrates more time to investigate before deciding whether to file formal charges and whether to send a case to trial. New Zealand captain Brendan McCallum has confirmed he'll bow out of international cricket before next year's World T20. McCallum has missed key games owing to a chronic back problem but the former wicket keeper says that was not the reason for his decision to call time on his career. Yeah, look, I think there's something pretty romantic about finishing, finishing playing in front of New Zealand crowds and, and playing in New Zealand grounds and also Christchurch. You know, playing two of the, the most amazing grounds in terms of the Basin Reserve and the history and, and how much that ground, I guess, means to, to New Zealanders and also then to finish in Christchurch, which is now see my, my established home um, there's, there's a little bit of romance there and, and I think that's um, you know, that, that was certainly the focus I knew I could steal myself for another couple of battles and the ones which I'm looking forward to I, lo I love playing cricket for New Zealand and, and love playing cricket I guess all good things must come to an end and I've had a great a great, uh, great time at the top of, of international sport, and um, you know, at some stage that has to come to an end and it has to finish. And um, you know, I think it's it's nice while you're still contributing to the team and you're still in a position that you're in that that you can make these sorts of decisions as well. And um, yeah, I guess the teams are just about ready as well for uh, for the next person to take over. And that's it on sports news. It's back to Amarachi with the rest of the news at ten. This is the ultimate redefined for men. Thanks a lot, Charles. Economic activities were brought to a halt over the weekend in Otopo local government area of Benue State as supporters of the All Progressives Congress senatorial candidate Daniel Onje came out to welcome him. The supporters organized a reception to welcome the APC candidate home following a Court of Appeal decision ordering a fresh election 
in this senatorial district. Mr. Daniel Onje, the candidate of the All Progressive Congress in the Benue South Senatorial Rerun election, acknowledging chairs from supporters. Onje drove from the Otupo Bunt Break Road to the Ochidamas Palace, where he received a royal blessing. At the inauguration of his campaign office, Onje advised the Dhamma people to break away from what he called years of poverty and deceit. The worst has happened to the very poor people because somebody who had taken us for granted and severely insulted our collective intelligence and sensibility, rather than coming to tell us another lie that he cannot keep, what is he saying now? That Onje of the nation. The zonal chairman of the party is upbeat about his party's ability to provide portable water and access road for the Doma people. This election is an election of asking somebody who have demanded for 17 years who have no water in Otuko for three years of his tenure as Senate President until the autumn administration less than 24 hours will have water running in Otuko. The water that pushes his own brother into water business now. So, in this election, by the grace of God, it should be 90 over 10. The senatorial candidate and his supporters believe that the APC will coast to victory in the rerun elections. Well, I think um, it's a clear indication of the, the position of the Bene South people over our success from the Court of Appeal. The victory we had from the Court of Appeal is what has engendered this. And the people have turned out in their millions to show indeed that change has come to Bene South today and it has come to stay forever. You can see this is spontaneous. The love is genuine. This is not paid cloud. On their own, they've come out. The people want change and they'll get change. Change is for sure. And change will come through the Alonje and APC. Onje vows to break the PDP stronghold of Benue South in the last 17 years in a bid to have all the three senators from Benue State on the APC platform. The fight against terror in Iraq is being intensified as Iraq's armed forces begin to take over of an ISIS stronghold in Ramadi. Spokesperson for the Army's counterterrorism unit, Sabah al-Numani, says the attack on the capital of Anba province began this morning. Adeshawa Josh has more on this and other stories. Iraqi forces are making headway in the fight against ISIS. The troops have invaded an ISIS stronghold in the center of Ramadi after launching a major assault to drive Islamic State militants from the city. Security sources say troops and allied tribesmen backed by U.S.-led airstrikes had already retaken two districts and entered two others. They are heading towards the main government complex against snipers and suicide bombers. French Interior Minister says a terror attack on police and army personnel in the region of Orleans has been foiled by the police. Two men, aged 20 and 24, have been arrested and are now being held for questioning. Both were thought to have had contact with another Frenchman, currently believed to be in Syria. Amnesty International has indicted the Burundi government forces of complicity in the massive killings seen across the capital, Bujumbura, on December 11, 2015. The rights group says that some of the scores of people who died during the single bloodiest day of Burundi's escalating crisis were killed extrajudicially. The government has not yet responded to the amnesty report. That's the foreign news wrap-up. Amarachi. The main news again, Channel's television has emerged. The best TV station of the year for a record 10th time. The station clinched the unprecedented honor at the 23rd Nigerian Media Merit Awards held in Lagos. Channel's TV previously won the award in 2000, 2001, 2003, 2004, 2008, with an unbroken sequence since 2010. 
Also, President Mahmoud Buhari has presented the budget for 2016 to the joint session of the National Assembly. Addressing the federal lawmakers today, the president unfolded a 6.08 trillion naira spending plan for 2016. And the Iraqi government forces have advanced into the center of Ramadi, which is controlled by the Islamic State. That's the news of 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani waiting to welcome home that trophy. But we leave you now with highlights of the 2015 Christmas Carol service held in Ogun State in Abelkota, the state capital. Good night.